Here's NBC's Tom Costello. How many times has it happened to you? You hit a pothole and it ruined your tires and rims. I'm mad. I'm real upset. I'm real upset because, I mean, we shouldn't have to drive on highways like this. The nation's civil engineers warn America's underinvestment in infrastructure could undermine America's global competitiveness. Take bridges, for example. Of 600,000 nationwide, 46,000 are structurally deficient. The World Economic Forum ranks the U.S. 13th in infrastructure behind countries big and small, including Singapore, Japan, South Korea, France, and the U.K., China is 36th and climbing as it and other countries upgrade railroads, ports, airports, broadband, clean water, roads, and bridges. If you travel internationally, you've probably seen it yourself. Driving across Belgium, Austria, Switzerland, and Germany, the roads are in remarkable condition. In fact, I haven't driven across a single piece of chewed up road or a pothole. And while the U.S. has only one high-speed train that briefly hits 150 miles per hour in the Northeast, Asian and European trains travel much faster. NBC's Claudio Lavagna on the Red Arrow, Rome to Naples. This train will hit a top speed of 190 miles per hour. For decades, Europe has invested heavily in high-speed trains from here in Italy in the south to Norway and Finland in the north, cutting down on air and road traffic and rushing people between cities. I think they're absolutely fantastic, always on time. Meanwhile, China is investing heavily across the board. NBC's Janice Mackey Freyer is in Beijing. China is already equipped with some of the world's biggest airports. This is Daxing. It's Beijing's newest. The plan now to build at least a dozen airports a year and by 2035 to have enough high-speed rail lines to circle the earth twice. Back in the U.S., where is the ship going? So this vessel will travel about 30 days. It is going to Vietnam, Hong Kong, three ports in China and Singapore. The port of New Orleans is spending one and a half billion dollars just to accommodate the newest ships that carry double the cargo from Asian ports that are already big enough. People need supplies. They need goods. Um, that's how products get to stores. That's how products get to homes. That global cargo traffic only increased during the pandemic. Importantly, in many countries with more modern roads, ports and railroads, citizens do pay more in taxes. The U.S. Transportation Secretary says it is time for a big national upgrade. We've been getting by on the investments that were made generations ago when we were willing to make big investments. With America's competitiveness on the line, fixing the nation's infrastructure has bipartisan support. The sticking point is how much we're willing to pay. Now, for how much all of this will cost, the nation's civil engineers estimate 2.6 trillion dollars to truly bring the country's infrastructure back up to standards. Right now, we have the biggest economy in the world. We're not even in the top 10 in terms of quality of infrastructure. But the debate here in Washington is over how much to pay for it and whether they should raise anybody's taxes to pay for it. Shep? Tom, thanks. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.